It's funny because Do Not Go, My Love is actually one of those songs that I sort of feel I've always known. Right. Which probably means it must have come across my music stand, as it were, okay. probably when I was at college or soon after. Yeah. Um, and certainly it was um, one of the pieces that um, uh, Dame Kiri and I used to enjoy doing right. when she went into the English part of her program. I suppose what, what my first impressions are of a, a very well-crafted song, right. uh, very much in the same period and the same kind of character as, say, Frank Bridge. For me, it's um, as much like a Tchaikovsky song. Yes. As um, could very well, you could imagine the whole thing in Russian. Mm -hmm. um, from the very start, this classic um, syncopated accompanying right. uh, um, figure, okay. mm -hmm. um, which is so brilliant because it sets up a pulse, but it leaves the singer free because the singer sings when the piano isn't playing. Exactly. Except on, of course, those heavy appoggiatura and downbeats. Yes. Do not go, my love. Mm -hmm. I have watched all night. Um, which are, of course, so um, um, critical to the character mm -hmm. of the song. I think um, when I say well-crafted, mm -hmm. um, what Hackerman understands uh, so well is, uh, is that the piano moves when the voice doesn't, yes. and uh, there is an inter there can be an interplay between uh, a voice, the voice, and the as well the counter melody or the answering melody yes. from the piano. It's also in shape. The he really projects uh, Tagore's poem in such a way that this refrain of "Do not go" exactly sort of sets up the. The, it lays the groundwork for a well-structured song. Exactly, where um, you exactly where you have your as it were your A section, and then you have a, a developing dra drama in your B section, and then you've got a really fantastic new section, new texture. Yes, that bit about could I but entangle your feet or whatever it is. Uh, yes, where you the. You've actually there's no base. You've left the ground. You're absolutely in in your head somewhere. Exactly. I think I conceive the song mm -hmm. more as a slow andante. Yes. Um, or if it's an adagio, it's almost an adagio in one. Yes. So that because you know if. if if one's just counting three, mm -hmm. Adagio, you're going to be one, two, three, one, yes. two, three, but then to go one, two, not go, <laughs> you know, funeral march. Exactly. We're never going to you're, get to the end of that. You're never, going, <laughs> you're never going to get to the end of the phrase. Yes. And you're never going to stop the person going. Exactly. Uh, um, and I think as I sort of implied talking about the accompanying figure, mm -hmm. um, its whole purpose actually is to allow the music to move forward. And you have very much the sense that the downbeat do not go. So it, it has to be a flowing three, yes, um, with one strong impulse to the bar. Yeah. Well, I know we're all supposed to say, oh, I read the poem first, and yeah. then I, you know, so that I know what it's going to be about, and yeah. then I look to see what the composer has made of it. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to say much more often I just sit down at bar one and I 
and say, where's, where's this going? What, yes. what have we got here? Um, and I mean, obviously, if it's a language that I can't read off and mm -hmm. understand as I go, yes. then I have to settle down and do, do some homework. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, I'm always more interested in the indications I get from the music yes. than the ones I get from the text, which is not to say that the text isn't important, mm -hmm. isn't the number one, um, uh, the number one element, yes. because after all it's where the composer started. Yes. But on the other hand, um, you can sometimes get trapped, and I find this some, sometimes, particularly with singers, yes. um, when the, uh, you, can, you can get trapped by um, uh, reading an interpretation of yeah. a poem mm -hmm. into it, or out of it, yes. which actually has not been picked up by the composer. Yeah. And then, what do you do? You know, you, you, you start, um, uh, you, you start trying to enact that reading mm -hmm. rather than living the musical version. Yeah. Which is not true. Uh, uh, which which then becomes a, a conflict. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually helpful to keep the options open. Yes. Because that probably um, creates a more kind of mixed colour to the song. Yes. Um, and therefore a more interesting uh, interpretation. Yes. I would say um, for the singer, it's unfolding these legato lines yes. and at the same time. Um, uh, pronouncing the words, articulating the words mm -hmm. uh, clearly and with feeling, yes. um, which sounds like a separate th thing, but actually doing so so that it's completely organic. Yeah. I think that's the. Um, I I would also say, I mean, if I was coaching the song, mm -hmm. it's the kind of song where I would encourage singer to um, to pay incredible attention to the harmonic mm -hmm. uh, color mm -hmm. the harmonic shifts and to reflect those in the voice yes which frankly you should do all the time but yes. in some music it's more important than others yeah. but it's I think it's very even right at the beginning in the do not go my love feel the the, the the deep harmony of the piano dragging the the, the deeper overtones yeah. out at the bottom of the voice, as it Wonderful. were. The, you know. yes. um, um, or the, the, that moment um, I start up. How does it go? I start up. And stretch out. I my stretch hand, my hand. Stretch my hand to touch, touch you. Yes. You know, being aware of that the harmonic change and. The, the change of colour, the change of placing in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, actually, is it a dream? It's yes. Not, not <laughs> technically straightforward. No, not at all. <laughs> because I have to talk to you. Yeah. And there are really lots of different ways of thinking of, uh, of that. Um, all of which would be part of the process. Yes. Yeah. And pianistically? Pianistically. I would say the main thing is is um, creating a um, a flowing web of sound, mm -hmm. um, providing your the singer with um, an organic and moving pulse yes. that um, still allows flexibility. Uh, that never drives the singer, never nails them down, never puts them in a straight jacket, yeah. um, which is implied right from the start by the, the syncopation. And, so and obviously, as where 
where it gets more dramatic, yes. there are purely technical issues, and you have to you know, play octaves but make them sound lyrical or, exactly. or, or more dramatic or less dramatic. And, um, questions of color, imaginary orchestration, yes. so all of that has to be taken into account. Do Not Go My Love being 100 years old, mm -hmm. um, how do you, how would you say does it fit into the 21st century? Well, it's relevant for studying of him is, as as being probably the song by which he is known yes. to anybody who knows the name. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think it's one of the wonderful things about the song repertoire yeah. that um, there are these wonderful one-offs, yes. which aren't one-offs, but are, um, you know, single, actually masterpieces. Yes. Um, in, in their sphere, they are masterpieces. They are songs that, that anybody would want to keep on their shelf. Indeed. And it may be the one thing by which a composer is known, but he's known by it. Exactly. And that's yes. terrific. Not forgotten. <laughs> Not exactly. Yes. You know, and there are... Um, but that in itself is a legacy. Yeah. In one song, exactly. it's a legacy. Exactly. Yes. And, and there are, you know, gems like that throughout the... The, uh, the repertoire. Um, <clears throat> I suppose you could say <clears throat> if it sits there and it encourages people to say, well, who was this person, Hagerman? What else did he write? Exactly. <clears throat> and explore it and come across something. And I think that, that this song expresses a very, very uh, universal and recognizable sentiment. Yes. As you say, it's a very, very fine poem. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's distilled through the music in a yes. in an unforgettable way. I can't. I really can't imagine anybody writing composing it differently. Yes. And one could it's say that that is as much of a compliment as anything else. Yes.